Hi, I'm Chris for RightSizeLife.com. When the weather is cold, dark, damp, and dreary, nothing helps us cope like comfort food. Not snack food, but homey, rib-sticking, old-fashioned comfort food. And nothing represents this food genre like mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes as a dish are totally achievable for the smaller household. So let's go to the kitchen and make mashed potatoes for one. There is something about mashed potatoes that allow us to pair them with almost anything. Where I grew up, hearty chicken and noodles were served over mashed potatoes, as if the noodles weren't enough. And we all know that any traditional Thanksgiving dinner has both dressing and mashed potatoes, since, apparently, we are really just interested in the gravy. Mashed potatoes are the keel of the American food ship of state, and a must to make, no matter what the size of your household. Potatoes, like so many foods recently, have gotten a culinary bad rap. This is because we tend to eat them skins off and fried in a vat of oil. Yes, chips, whether the American snack food variety or the British version we call French fries, are delicious, but ultimately not very good for you. They are also highly processed. However, basic potatoes that you make at home, whether baked, roasted, or mashed, are high in vitamins like C and B6. If you leave the skins on, they are an excellent source of fiber. And finally, they have more potassium, ounce for ounce, than a banana. One of the biggest crimes of the 1950s was to introduce the world to instant mashed potatoes. Since then, a wide variety of these so-called meal helpers have come on the market, all equally mediocre. Likewise, a selection of frozen and deli case mashed potatoes are also available. Although they are slightly better, they tend to be sticky and starchy. To cover up for the poor texture, food manufacturers load these pre-made potatoes up with flavorings, both artificial and fatty. The answer is to put aside inferior substitutes and to make our own. Ingredients are pretty basic. For a single large serving, or two smaller ones, use one large baking potato. You will also need a tablespoon of butter, salt, pepper, and finally milk somewhere between a quarter and a half a cup. I use fat-free half and half because it is what I also use in my coffee. Don't overthink this. You can, if you want, substitute a good olive oil or cream cheese for the butter, and you can use some sour cream instead of milk to make the potatoes smooth. The bottom line is mashed potatoes are just that simple. Here's a bonus, they are also gluten-free. Start by either peeling your potato or scrubbing it if you intend to leave the jacket on. Besides a large baking potato, you can also use red or Yukon gold potatoes. Both of these varieties have naturally thinner skins, and loose potatoes instead of bagged can be found at several local markets. If you leave the skin on, make sure to look over the potato for bad spots and cut them away before you chunk up your potato. cut into relatively small chunks, say an inch or so square. The smaller the cut, the quicker the cook time. Uniformity is also a plus, as you want all the chunks to finish at the same time. Place all the chunks in a pan, and then place in cold water. You want the pan to look and feel too big for the potatoes. Like pasta, the more room the potatoes have to cook, the better. Plus, the bigger pan will make mashing easier later on. Liberally salt the water, and then place the potatoes over high heat and bring to a boil. Because we are not cooking very many potatoes, and have cut the chunks relatively small, potatoes will cook relatively quickly, probably about 10 minutes after the water boils. As with almost all cooking, don't overcook, potatoes cut this small will quickly get waterlogged. So, as soon as a fork will slide into a chunk, pull the potatoes from the heat. Immediately drain the potatoes into a strainer. A word of caution, 
Potatoes hold heat and steam, so this process is hot and will scald or burn your hands. So be careful. As soon as the water is drained from the potatoes, put them back in the pan you cooked them in. This has two advantages. First, the pan is hot and will not only keep the cooked potatoes warm, but will allow some steam to escape. This keeps the boiled potatoes from getting too soggy. Second, you only use one pan to cook the mashed potatoes, which shortens cleanup. There are dozens of styles of potato mashers on the market. Anything from the old school flat wooden ones to fancier, greater metal mashers. It doesn't really matter what you use. With the potatoes in your original pan, begin to mash. Add your salt and pepper as you are mashing. White pepper is traditional as it prevents black flecks in the final product. However, it really doesn't matter. If you are going to add any other dry flavorings like onion or garlic powder, this is a good time. When the potatoes are completely mashed up, Add the butter and mix with a fork or wooden spoon. Once the butter is incorporated, then add milk, a couple of tablespoons at a time, until you get the consistency you like. Again, normally between one quarter and one half a cup. This will not be a smooth or whipped potato since we left the skins on, so don't worry about a lump or two. After all, lumps are how you know the potatoes are instant. From there, Serve with whatever you want, including gravy, white sauce, or one of my favorites, a big lump of butter. Mashed potatoes for one are so simple, it is amazing instant potatoes exist anywhere, except school cafeterias and the military. To make potatoes for you and a buddy, simply double the recipe and use a bigger pan. Of course, mashed potatoes have hundreds of variants, including additions like cheese, bacon, green or sautéed onion, roasted garlic, even Italian or ranch dressing instead of butter and milk. So throw out your instant potato flakes and make some warm mashed potatoes from scratch. They are guaranteed to be comforting on cold, dreary nights. Now that is all for this video demo. You can find a written version of the information presented, plus other cooking and lifestyle tips at rightsizelife.com. Rightsizelife.com is an online community dedicated to those living solo or in pairs. RightSizeLife.com. Big living on a small scale.